if you're a weird introvert oddball like me who feels alone a lot of the time and you needed to hear a story like this today so you don't feel alone know this my life has been far from easy and you're not alone Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new here on my channel, my name is Taylor. I live in Baltimore City, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel, I feature content that's generally focused on knitting and spinning. In this week's episode of what I call the Thread to Men podcast, where I sit down and share with you the things that I'm making sort of in real time, I have so many things to catch you up on. I really did miss you all last week. Um, before we get into the knitting really quick, I was just out of town for annual putt-putt golf tournament amongst friends and it didn't go well for me. Um, we'll talk about that towards the end of the video in case you're interested to hear about it. Uh, but I have a lot of knitting stuff to share. Shockingly, um, the the most exciting I think is the finished bookkeeper cardigan that I am currently wearing. I my stomach continues to growl. I haven't had breakfast yet. I've had a very busy morning. Do you, it's like a thunderstorm inside me. I had to photograph this garment prior to sitting down to record today, so I'm a little bit behind my schedule. The pattern is almost ready for testers. I still need to insert the pictures and I wanna finalize the yardage because I wanna make it specific to the colors I chose for the button band so that if you're knitting it exactly the way you see it, you have all the information you need. There's no guesswork here. So if you've already signed up to test knit this garment, thank you for being patient with me. I feel like I'm like a week, maybe two weeks behind schedule at this point right now. Um, but life gets in the way sometimes. Um, so if you're interested in test knitting this gorgeous cardigan garment, um, there's a link below to a form you can fill out. I am considering, because I know that stripes are not for everyone. It's a very bold statement. It's a very, um, you know, it's like you can't wear it with everything type of thing. Um, I'm thinking about knitting another in a solid color with just the striped detail on the button band. Um, and I wanna open that up to testers as well. So if you're interested in knitting a garment shaped like this one, that's a little bit more basic, then that option is open to you. Another thing too, is that in this particular pattern, I want to include little boxes and blurbs of how you can modify this garment exactly to your liking. Girl, I've made the sleeves to this garment a certain length. Most patterns are written so that the sleeves are of a certain length, but I wanna open up the instructions for there to be modifications for people who may have never modified their garments before. If you're interested in testing, there's gonna be a lot of info to this pattern I think you might be interested in, or if you wanted to sit out that process and wait for it to be ready, I hope that it will be ready to publish within 
maybe five to six weeks. Um, we'll see, but that is that. I have made the slightest bit of progress on Stephen West's bubble cardigan. Um, she is a loud one. I've made loud after loud garments over here. I think that the summer just really got to me and I was, I was feeling very, this looks very Rastafarian. I decided I was going to follow the written instructions and join the front and back at the same time the pattern tells you to. Originally I was thinking about extending the yoke, but I think that the yoke on the size that I'm making, um, You may well know that I've been working on this using several skeins of West Knits bicycle yarn, as well as a couple colors of stash I had of Brooklyn Tweed's Loft. And that orange skein there is from Biche and Bouche. It's a two-ply uh, fingering weight uh, woolen spun yarn. So I'm excited to have this be my current sort of monogamous um, project. It's the thing I'm going to take on vacation with me in a couple weeks because I think I'm going to have a lot of stitches to work in the body and the sleeves. I have not yet read forward into the pattern to know how the sleeves are shaped, um, but I do think that I will likely provide a little bit of a tapered sleeve. Um, I haven't really made up my mind yet. I also might just go for the straight sleeve if that's what the pattern um, suggest because, I don't know, it might be nice to have something more relaxed in the arm. Um, but I do very much love like a tapered moment where the forearm is just nice and, I don't want to say snug because it's not tight fitting, but it's, it's fitted. I wonder what this looks like on top of my cardigan here. Oh, don't drop the stitches, Taylor. Stop it. Oh, this is a nightmare. Why am I doing this to myself right now? Okay, this was not a good idea. I forgot that when I was trying this on previously, I had a needle in the front and a different needle in the back. And right now I'm not only dropping all my stitches, but I'm, I'm gonna have to rework the last 10 or so. There's nothing that I can do that's gonna make this look like sort of how it will in the end, but as you can see, I have a lot of ends to weave in. And, goodness gracious, I thought I gave myself a lot of ends to weave in in working the sleeves of this garment. If you've watched previous episodes, you know that I just carried the contrast colors of the bookkeeper cardigan up the side body all the way through. So there were almost no ends to weave in throughout the process of making the majority of this garment. But once I started working in the round for the sleeve, that was mandatory. I had to break the yarn and weave in ends as I knit. So it didn't really feel that daunting because it was like every six rounds or so that I would knit, I would stop and weave in two ends. So it felt like a very um, cohesive and natural kind of process. Um, in fact, it kind of was nice to break up the, the stock and net knitting work with a couple ends to weave in. It sort of made it interesting, which I guess is a very optimistic perspective, but I try to enjoy myself as I continue to make things. Um, but this is going to have ends to weave in every step of the way. Of course, Steven suggests his weave in Steven method and I should start to listen to it, but I think just old habits die hard and I'm just so eager to keep knitting regularly. I don't listen to the sound advice of weaving in as you go. I might regret that. I don't know. I think what I might do is weave some of these ends in while riding in the car. All right, I need to take this off because one wool garment is enough right now. In last week's episode, I asked if any of you had any questions you wanted answered, I would answer them in the following video. And a couple of you followed up. The first is, 
I'm wondering if the gauge swatches are accounted for in the yarn quantities on pattern. I always get nervous, but seem to have enough yarn by the end of the project. Is this because the designer adds that amount when writing up the pattern or are we all just getting lucky? Thanks. I think that's a great question. And I think I need to update my form to include people's names because I, I kept it very simple and I, I don't even know who asked this, but I'm happy to chime in. I add about 10% of the required yardage to account for differences in gauge that are ever so slight um, and that will kind of include the swatch. Um, I think I've heard Andrea Mowry on her podcast recently answer this question and she said the same. She adds about 10% or so to account for differences like whether it's gauge or the the actual weight of the skein versus what the skein tells you it weighs. Um, I also get nervous about swatching and losing yardage um, because very often I am I have like the bare minimum of yardage and I'm never sure it's, if it's enough. So I always end up with more yarn than I need typically. I think that if you are buying what they're telling you to need that you need, you should have enough to swatch. I think that is the case. Um, especially if they're telling you to swatch, that should be accounted for. The second question is, how did you learn to write knitting patterns? I would like to start, but I don't know where to start. I learned how to write knitting patterns by following well-written knitting patterns. It's like learning to run a marathon. I think I don't, I don't run marathons, so forgive me if this is not a good example, but you don't run a marathon by just running in a marathon. You practice running before. So if you're thinking about writing patterns, work other people's patterns. I, I've i just made a lot of garments. Um, I've made quite a few sweaters. I've made a few shawls. Um, I would just make things and study the things that you like about people's patterns. Like every designer has their own style of writing and I feel like it's important to um, to try out different designers and read their patterns and work their patterns to know like um you know how does the end result look and feel um but by following different patterns instructions i learned what i like in a pattern and i started designing because i wanted to make what i really like in the finished garment when you're following a pattern you're at the mercy of the designer and their standard fit. Different designers have a different standard of fit. Like typically they're designing for themselves and so they knit garments that fit themselves very well. Um, so that is generally reflected in the kind of um, standard measurements that they utilize. But I, I actually learned how to grade patterns, which I feel like might actually be the, the broader question. Um, by pulling out an Excel spreadsheet and thinking through um, the differences in size. I learned to grade by kind of figuring out what are the standard measures of the depth of a yoke or um, the width of a body. You know, I kind of like set these perimeters up where it's like I cannot extend the yoke further than this, 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 and this, or um, you know, I need the body measurement to be this, 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 you know, I kind of set the standard for different sizes. And then I fill in the instructions until I've met that standard. So I've used Excel spreadsheets to help me grade. I showed in my previous podcast video, a little snippet of my spreadsheet situation um, that I will link to above in case you want to check that out if you haven't or maybe you have but you were wondering like how did she learn this I am generally self-taught I learned to design garments by being like fanatical about my knitting with the help of the internet I maintained this deep enthusiasm and pure excitement uh, in knitting like I just became obsessed with knitting I would wake up and knit and come home from work and knit and knit before bed and knit like in every moment I could. I just really dove deep into knitting to a degree where I was learning something new 
every time I made a garment, I was learning a new technique or a new skill and I was noticing what I liked. I really did very much follow in the footsteps of many other people. It's all a bit creative in terms of how do I want the garment to look like that is the art of design. Um, but then there's the mathematical and analytical element of what numbers do I need to have to execute the goal? So um, I think I learned to design knitwear by being inquisitive, curious, creative, um, but also very much studying what other people have done. Um, but I think about where am I starting and what does that need to be with the gauge that I'm working with? And then where do I go from there? And it's just finding one boundary to meet before turning and working a different boundary and then turning and working to a different boundary. I That's how I conceptualize it. I don't know if I've answered the question yet. How did I learn to design? I don't know. I taught myself. I don't know that I even know how to design, to be honest with you. I think that I do. And many people have followed my patterns and been very encouraging and supportive and kind. And if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be designing. If you're wanting to learn to design, I would recommend uh, working intricate patterns, patterns that challenge you, patterns that force you to learn something new each and every time. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. Because whether you're ever incorporating any of those things or not into your own design, it's going to boost your confidence. It's going to help you think more creatively. And, you know, the more exposure you have to the art of it all, the more information it'll lend towards your designing uh, perspective. I hope I answered your question. I'm not an expert. I'm just a self-taught uh, enthusiast. If you have a question that you would like me to answer, let me know by leaving it in a form submission below. There is a link in the description box to fill that out. And thank you to those who have already asked your questions. I wish I knew who you were. I'm going to update that form. Since the time of our last sit down together, Brooklyn Tweed did have an overstock sale and I could not stop myself from indulging in the savings. And I bought yarn I don't need. Now that I own it, I have to do something with it. I don't know why I sound so unenthused. It's just that I am so fully derailed from my uh, original goal of the year to knit for my stash. I've done nothing but buy yarn and knit with it right away. I don't think I've I don't think I've cast on a new project this year with stash yarn. That's not true. When I saw the prices of this yarn, I just went for it. I didn't ask any questions. I should have, because I wouldn't have paid for shipping if I just bought, I think, one more skein of yarn. Um, I love a deal. Anyway, I, <laughs> I didn't need to, and I said I wasn't going to at the start of the year. I'm beating myself up a little bit uh, for setting such a high standard for myself in January of 2022, saying that I wouldn't buy yarn. I will knit from my stash alone. I have completely failed at that task. I've not done that at all. I don't know why. I feel a little overwhelmed by the amount that I have. And it's not even, I mean, compared to some people, it's not close to the stash some people have, but I just feel like I don't know when I'm going to get to it, you know, and I've really slowed down a lot with my knitting. And I think that I might have bought more yarn in 2022 than the last two or three years combined. Um, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any excuse. It's just that I do what I do and I don't know why. Um, I think as long as I'm not struggling financially, it's okay. You know, I can like take a breath and calm down. Like I don't need to be so dramatic. But I don't know what I'm going to do with this and it bothers me that I don't have a plan. I did talk in a recent video about patterns that I've purchased on sale. Also, I love a sale. It's a worsted weight yarn, but it's very, very light, it has so much air in it. I mean, if you think about it, this looks like a 100 gram skein. It's only 50 grams because there's so much air in it. I know that I could knit the weekender um, because I have all the yardage for it. That's basically why I bought eight skeins of this, but I just don't know. I don't know when 
I don't know why I do this to myself. I think, um, I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I just don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I very much missed you all last week. I want you all to know that. I do not um, bail on uploading unless I have a reason. And last week I was out of town for the annual Putt Putt Golf Tournament. I know I mentioned it, but I got my weeks mixed up and then I was going to record a video like I usually do when I'm out of town, but I just got so caught up in the moment. I forgot to take footage of things and do stuff. So, um, I, I missed you guys. And if you reached out to me to check in and see that I'm okay, Thank you so much. It made it made me feel so like seen and cared for um, to have someone reach out and be like, "You okay, girl?" Because um, I'm not okay. <laughs> I I thrive with structure and routine. To sit down and record every Saturday, it's just it gives me something to look forward to. Um, I love the Sunday premieres at 9 a.m. and checking in with you guys in the chat and just saying hello. Like that is my social engagement for the week. To be frank. I know that it's not exciting or cool and I seem like I have no real friends. I do have real friends. We're all, we're all busy adults. Um, but, uh, we were out of town for the annual pup Hut golf tournament and I, I don't, I, and this is what makes me, this is what makes me feel some type of way. And I'm going to try to be short because I am angry about it. And I, I know that no one wants to hear about that, but, um, I have dietary restrictions. I have an autoimmune disorder that I, I basically treat with nutrition. The thing that I'm learning about myself is I need to, number one, know exactly what my needs are, and number two, advocate for my needs aggressively when necessary. And I've pretty much done a terrible job at managing those two elements of life. Um, when I'm around other people. When I'm by myself, I'm great at that. But as soon as I'm around other people, there's like this state of conflict within me alone. And because I'm the only one suffering, I just choose to suffer. What I'm getting at is that every year at our Pup Pup Golf Tournament, we meet up at the bagel shop for breakfast and we go to the pizza place for lunch. And I cannot consume gluten. I physically become unwell. And so... I thought that I was preparing myself for the day by having fruit and yogurt at 7.30 a.m. before the bagels. And then as soon as we started playing the games, I was just so exhausted. I didn't have the same caloric intake as literally everyone else at the same time as everyone else. So I just like crashed way before lunch. And I went and bought snacks. I ate my snacks. I felt a little bit better, but then once we got to lunchtime, there's like nothing I can eat at this place but like iceberg lettuce and feta cheese, which is not my favorite. So I was just like pretty miserable and I should have just gotten in my car and drove to some other place to eat food that would satiate my needs, but I didn't. And I did eat the gluten-free pizza, but... Um, I'm still sick from it and I'm kind of angry at this point because I'm tired of feeling sick. Like I'm physically tired and I'm exhausted and the exhaustion makes me angry because there's so much that I want to do with my life that I physically can't do because I don't feel well. If you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. A few of the things on my horizon that I'm looking forward to are, um, well, Rhinebeck weekend, mid-October. We're about, I guess, like six weeks away or so. There's so much I need to do. I'm going to be out of town for like two of those weekends. So between now and then, I have about 400 grams of yarn I need to spin. Um, I have a personal goal of finishing this sweater spin, of course. I've mentioned it many times before, but I have still 200 grams of fiber that I need to comb and spin. That's going to be my Labor Day weekend goal is spinning the rest of my sweater quantity spin. And then I have um, 
fiber that I want to spin and take with me to Rhinebeck so that I can find the main color for a sweater. So I'm going to spin this fiber up before then. Hopefully I will get that done. I want to accomplish some of the things that I say I'm going to do. Um, part of me thought maybe I would use this as the main color, but I don't know if it would be different enough from the yellow. So I'm going to spin the spin the contrast colors and then maybe do a swatch with this before I decide because I would very much like to have a black main color for the throwover, um, throwover pullover. So that is it for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. Again, I want to thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and that you take care.